Have you ever been playing a game and you miss that final game winning buzzer beating shot and you think the ref's an idiot and my controller is a heap of junk? Well, now you have the tools to test the lag on your controller and you can work out if you are crazy or not. Today, we're gonna to be looking at the Mr. Input Latency Tester. It's this device here. If you've ever used the Mr. Input Latency database, that spreadsheet that's been championed by Mr. Add-ons, this is the device that's been producing those results. It's a pretty simple homebrew adapter. And in today's video, I'm gonna explain how it works. I'm gonna show you how to build one. I'm gonna lag test some of my own controllers. We're gonna talk about the results. Let's do it. So when you're talking about lag in your game, I think it can be broken down into three parts. Screen lag, console lag, and controller lag. So this project is designed to specifically only test the controller lag. In the same way, a time sleuth specifically only tests the display lag. The original idea and Arduino code for this project was written by user George on the Classic Gaming Discord, but it was updated by Lemonisi and Porkchop Express from Mr. Add-ons. I'm gonna leave links to the project in the video description. The lag tester unit itself is built around an Arduino Pro Micro. It controls the lag test. So the first part is we need to solder two wires from the Arduino to the controller, and this allows the Arduino to fire off button presses. Now we need to wire in the return signal back from the mister. And to do that, we're going to use just a general 2.0 USB cable. We're gonna cut it, take out the four wires, we're gonna stick one end into the IO board, and then the other two wires we are gonna solder into the Arduino, and that allows it to complete the round trip. Now when the test is started, the Arduino fires off a button press, which gets to your controller. Your controller is connected to the mister, and on the mister, you're running a special modified NES core, which is designed to take any input signal and then send another signal back out of that IO port on the IO board, and then we can calculate the round trip time. We then connect to the Arduino via its onboard USB. We're gonna make a Telnet connection to that. It's all gonna be text. We run the test. We let it go like several thousand times or so. The results come out in a comma separated file, a CSV. We then load that into Excel or your favorite spreadsheet and you can do all the mathematics and statistics that you want on the results. This isn't a difficult project, but you will need to be able to solder some wires into the Arduino. Now, as I was making this project, I was soldering and desoldering to this unit so many times that I burnt the traces off this one. Only then did I remember that I had bought these cool little green rails for the Arduino, which let you screw in the wires instead. If only I had remembered this two hours before. I'm gonna be doing the test today with this Buffalo USB pad. It's one I picked up in Japan in the junk bin, works perfectly, and it's a very simple design which will make it easier for us to work on. Now you're going to need to open the controller and solder onto a button. These two black parts get bridged when the controller button is being pushed down. It's a conductive pad. We need to get one wire onto the active side and one wire onto a ground pin. This is the tough part. It's not at all obvious and probably the biggest difficulty in the project. Scraping away solder mask and trying to solder onto a flat surface is a possibility, but it's also really fragile. What I elected to do in the video is an old trick from pad hacking. What you do is you take a very fine one millimeter drill bit and a small hand drill and then you make a hole directly through the PCB where the trace comes out on the other side. This is why I selected a really simple controller that has a simple PCB without many layers in it. This way you can get a really clean through hole solder joint that is quite strong. The only problem is you gotta drill a hole in your controller. <laughs> I then wire the active signal to pin five and ground on the controller goes to a ground on the Arduino. Now I just have to screw them in. You're going to make the return cable using an old USB 2.0 cable. 
The port at the side of the IO board looks like a USB port, but it isn't actually USB. It's just a convenient plug that uses four data lines. You need to get a USB 2.0 cable and cut the mail end off. Cut the mail end off? There are four wires inside and you need to connect the green cable to pin two and black cable goes to ground. Alternatively, you can find these cheap USB breakout boards on AliExpress and then you've just got a simple solder and wire job. So to control the lag tester, we need to upload code into the Arduino. You can find this code on the Mr. Add-ons GitHub. I'm gonna leave a link in the description. And it's actually a pretty simple, straightforward page of Arduino code. It literally just fires off a signal down one pin and then waits for a return signal on the other pin and then calculates the round trip time. Load the project in the Arduino IDE. Make sure you set the COM port and your board type. Then compile the code and upload it into the device. Once that's done, pull out the USB from the Arduino, plug it back in, and it's now in lag testing mode. However, it won't begin testing yet, even though it's powered on. The code is set to only start the lag test when you make a serial connection over the USB port. First up, let's enable one millisecond USB polling on your mister by running the script fastpollingon.sh. Install and fire up the custom NES core and don't forget to make sure that the button you are firing is mapped to something in the core. Then just close the on-screen display before you start. You're going to need a Telnet tool like Putty to make the connection. Choose the same COM port that you selected in the Arduino IDE and the speed needs to be 115-200. And when you make the connection, this starts firing off the first test. What I do is set the Putty log file to output to the desktop and then the log file becomes your comma separated results that you can enter into Excel or a spreadsheet and then it's up to you to do averages and standard deviation and all the statistics that you want on that data. I ran 5,000 rounds through my Buffalo controller and I can see there was an average round trip time of just over five milliseconds. And the standard deviation is quite low and it tells me that the 5,000 results were quite consistent. So five milliseconds is really good. The really the best results you can get like a Damon byte adapter is one millisecond. Remember a frame is 16 milliseconds. So five is not bad. If you don't get any results, first of all, check that your button is actually mapped properly in the NES core. And sometimes you've got to switch the wires on the controller, the ground and the active one. As you can probably tell, it's a real pain to have to solder onto a controller each time you want to test it. However, if you're interested in testing arcade fight sticks, then there's a small modification that'll make your tests really easy. I took the two wires that connect to the controller and I put small metal lugs on the end. So it's just like a real fight stick button and you can connect and disconnect faster than you could say, why are you even testing lag? Lag doesn't matter. I Next up, I wanted to see whether my results would match the public database. So I got my 8-bit dough arcade stick the good thing about this is it's an arcade stick so I can connect and disconnect easy. Also, it's got three different connection modes. It's got wired, Bluetooth, or its own 2.4G dongle. So we're gonna get three sets of results for the price of one. Looking at the results, first of all, the 2.4G dongle, this is the result I got, 11.03 milliseconds, and in the public database, it's 11.1 milliseconds. I think that's pretty close, so I'm very happy with that result. Uh, also, the standard deviation was not too far off, so I'm not getting crazy wild results on either side. Next up, I ran the wired results, and they are also very similar. Standard deviation, also very close. That was a good result. The last test was over Bluetooth, and this is where the results got really interesting. So we can see that I clocked in at 14 milliseconds when the public database says seven milliseconds. And also the standard deviation was much larger, which means I was getting like re results really quite wild and all over the place. So this tells me that my Bluetooth connection is not very good. Either the adapter isn't good or I've misconfigured it somehow or another. So this is a place where the lag testing device really gave me some very useful information. 
by this time, I was well into the lag testing mood. I wanted to test everything I had. I also have a Damon Byte controller. Uh, you can check out my video on how to build one of these. It's a device that allows you to connect a classic controller over USB with really low lag. And when I ran my Damon Byte controller through the tester, it came out at less than one millisecond. That is super low, almost as low as you're gonna get. Lower than you'll ever need. And again, it's a testament to the great work done by Mick Giver on that project. I think it's also good to think about these results in the broader context. So let's say I got this controller, this is five milliseconds of lag. I've also got this screen, it contributes five milliseconds of lag because a time sleuth told me. So then when I'm using that controller and that screen on this mist, I have a total of 10 milliseconds of lag, which is still, less than the 16 milliseconds of one frame at 60 frames a second. That's pretty good. So it's good to know these numbers. Less than a frame, I don't think you're ever gonna feel it. Of course, there are always people who are more sensitive to lag and less. And this is where a device like this might really tell you, but you need to understand every part of your chain. And don't forget, if you're not using a, a low lag device like Mister, if you're using like a real console, oh look, we got the Xbox, 360, yeah, well, guess what? The Xbox 360 is gonna introduce a ton of lag as well. So you, if you're really concerned about this, you gotta be very precise about how we're taking all these measurements. Thanks very much for watching. This video took me ages to do because it's kind of the most technical one that I've done so far. And I tried to really lay it out step by step. If something wasn't clear, please let me know in the comments so I can improve for next time. If you have some questions about the project, go in the comments or on the Mr. FPGA Discord. I'm usually hanging out in the hardware channel. You can find me there, Zez Retro, and I'll do my best to answer your questions about the project. Well, my name's Lewis. This has been Zez Retro. See you next time.